Hi everybody, just a quick little message from me to say thank you so much. We have managed to hit the unbelievable milestone of 100,000 subscribers. And I say we because this has been very much a team effort. A big thank you to every single person that has been involved in the channel over the last four years. It's been an absolutely amazing journey and I cannot wait to see where it goes. Now, many of you will know that I recently managed to make my dream come true of purchasing a Ferrari 550. An amazing car, I absolutely love it, and of course there is going to be plenty more content coming on that vehicle. Today we're talking about what is also a dream car for a lot of people, a Porsche. And the people at BOTB would like to help you realise that dream as well. You see, they've got no fewer than 19 Porsche currently available on their site for you to win. And they start from about £2.25. However, if you want to win something similar to what we've got on today, a 718 Boxster, they've got a new Boxster GTS with the 4-litre engine available to win from just £3.15. You have to play a little spot the ball game to enter and details of everything you need to know are on their website. They have given away hundreds of cars and hundreds of millions in prizes over the last two decades. So they're decent people, they're real petroheads, I love working with them and if you want to have a crack at winning your dream car, go on the website, enjoy because without the help of people like them and my cat Florence who's trying to get in yet another video, well... I simply wouldn't be here. So, from me and from her, thank you so much for watching, being a part of the family. Stick around. See you for the next one. Bye bye. Hello, everybody. Another day and another Porsche. Today, we're looking at a vehicle which I think is possibly the most underrated car to come out of Stuttgart in the last decade. You see, when it was launched, the Cayman GT4 was seen as manna from heaven. It was a gift from the gods, a vehicle which many had hypothecated about, but for so long, Porsche had said absolutely was never going to happen. Then it did, and an instant classic was born. Now, when the 981 Cayman GT4 debuted, it had a sibling, the Boxster Spider. And yet, that car didn't so much live in its shadow, more as live in a quiet little old folks home a few villages away where none of his family really ever came to speak to it. Now in the 981 generation I could kind of understand why that was the case because where the Cayman GT4 was gifted the suspension from the absolutely sublime GT3, a fabulous little engine, the Spider got the engine but none of the other stuff which made the GT4 quite so remarkable and so transformative compared with the regular Caymans. However, for the new 718 or 982, however you want to call them, generation of cars, that changed quite dramatically. The Boxster Spider mechanically now is a Cayman GT4 without a roof, but it's actually a little bit more than that. Whereas the GT4 does rather look like a Cayman that's just driven through Halfords, the Spider is an utterly striking thing. With the unnecessarily complicated roof stowed away, this thing looks every inch the baby Carrera GT. And presented here in stunning Miami blue, it's an utter joy to behold. Now I have to give special thanks to Roger Bailey for lending me the car. He's got his own YouTube channel that he runs in his own words as a little bit of a hobby. So if you want to know more about this car and his opinions on Porsche products, of which he has many, go and check him out. The link for that will be in the description below. It is really quite simple for me. The, the Cayman GT4 is a remarkable thing. It's wonderful, it's brilliant, it's amazing, all that jazz. But the Boxster Spider seems to be just to be that little bit more. Now, the Spider story is an interesting one because there have actually been about four versions. The first was the RS60 Spider, which came out in the 987 generation and was essentially a sort of paint job and plaque special. That was then followed by the first sort of proper Spider, which had an extremely complicated roof setup, and then the 981, and now this. The heart of the current 718 is a brand new engine, the 9A2 Evo. We're about to get passed by Tim from Vehicle Villains in his GT3 and his friend in a yellow box of Spider. Regrettably, this car, good as it might sound, doesn't sound anywhere near quite what they do. 
The original Cayman GT4 was a massive hit, no doubt in part thanks to its engine, but that Carrera-derived lump was out of production, and so everyone knew that a new GT4 and Boxster Spider were coming, but they had no idea what was going to power it. I have to say that I was among those who were shocked when Porsche announced that they had developed an entirely new lump out of the block used in the 3-litre turbo 911 and created this naturally aspirated 4-litre. It's got 420 horsepower, 310 pound-foot of torque and revs to 8,000 RPM. Modern rules and regs mean, of course, that it just doesn't sound like those old engines do, but it's ridiculously flexible, pulling hard from about 3,000 RPM, and it's mated to the most wonderful, the most fantastic and delicious six-speed manual. Now, the seven-speed that's used in the 911 gets an awful lot of stick, but you know what? It's not actually a bad gearbox, but the simple truth is that this one is pure perfection, and I say that as an S2000 owner. This is a better gearbox. It just is. Now, maybe that's due to the fact that my S2000 is 17 years old, but this thing is stunning. The throw is ultra short. The action is precise. It's notchy when it should be, and it's slick when it should be. It's utterly brilliant. The engine's also got enough punch that the long-ish ratios aren't really much of a problem either. The steering here is electric, of course, as it has been in Porsche products for a few years now, but they really have cracked it. Now it isn't quite as brilliant as the old hydraulic systems, but it's so damn good that you really do have to be driving the two cars back to back and thinking really hard about it. This one has plenty of texture coming through. It's only the weighting that's really slightly off, and I, I do mean slightly. By any other metric, this is really quite fantastic. Now, Roger's specification in here is also to my taste because like me, he's not really much of a fan of Alcantara and so did everything he could to get as rid of much of it from the cabin as possible. He even added some around the steering column here and it's the little details like that that I think really lift this interior. You've got nice white contrast stitching and on a day like today, this is a fabulous place to be. Buffeting in here isn't too bad. You've got a glorious soundtrack and it doesn't sound too bad from the outside. Naturally, if you really must have an ear-splitting soundtrack, there are a number of companies who will be happy to provide that for you. The suspension in here, for the first time in Boxster Spider history, as mentioned, is the same as the GT4, which means that it is essentially the same adjustable setup that you get in a 911 GT3 at the front end, the rear end then being bespoke to these cars. It is firm and it sits right on that line of what to me is acceptable as a road car. Any firmer than this, any firmer at all, and it just it just wouldn't be good. But as it is, it's, it's just about all right. It's just about soft enough that on the more difficult sort of potholy roads, this particular road is actually very smooth and soft, and so this is great. But on the more difficult roads we took to get here, you are being sort of bounced around just a little bit. This car will auto blip for you if you ask it to. I'm currently doing it the old fashioned way, A to show off, but B to see that it can be done. And the car is quite happy to do it. The other options on this car include heated seat and heated steering wheel, which in a convertible such as this, I think are perfectly acceptable. Parking sensors, a camera, which I don't think should be options on a car of this price, but hey ho, that's Porsche for you. And that's generally about it. Steering wheel is a joy to hold. The seats, which are not the buckets, are actually very nice and very supportive. They're not the same as the standard seats you might get in a 911. They are a little bit more sculpted as they might be in a GT3. And so they work very well indeed. Overall, this car is a pretty perfect package. And the prices people are asking for them aren't obscene. They were generally in the sort of high 80s with a bit of spec on them. And people are now asking just shy of £100,000 for one, but honestly, I, I suspect that if you offer people maybe list price plus a couple of grand for whatever they bought, you'd probably be able to get one. The view out is fantastic. Actually, the way that front end drops down really does remind me of my old Lotus, because it's got that same sort of crease line that the Lotus does, whereas the 911s tend to be a little bit smoother and softer. All the touch points in here are exactly where they should be. Very classic Porsche. It does everything right. and. Although I'm sure if you're talking about Caymans, there is a lot to be said that the previous GT4 is all you need. With the Boxster, this really is the one that has absolutely everything on it. And so 
Slightly complicated roof mechanism aside, I think that's a price worth paying for something that looks genuinely special, really stands out, delivers the performance, the interaction and the driver involvement that you want from a sports car. And while that six cylinder engine might not sing like the units of old, we should really just be thankful that Porsche were able to make it at all. And let's enjoy it while it's here. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Please make sure to check out Roger's channel and I'll see you for the next one. Bye-bye.